Palestra Training, Windows Server 2008 Network Infrastructure Configuration 7642, Remote Access Services and Protocols. Let's take a look at the objectives in this Palestra Training lesson. In this lesson, we're going to cover five key knowledge areas. First of all, we'll talk about remote access services and components. We'll look at configuring remote access on our Windows 2008 server talk about remote access policies. We'll talk about the Connection Manager as well as the Connection Manager Administration Kit, CMAK. And then finally, remote access and tunneling protocols. Or you could provide an access rule as necessary for the VPN clients to bypass the firewall. Another system is the NPS system. Before your clients can connect through a VPN connection, the NPS or Network Policy Server System has to authorize and authenticate those users. You can also get auditing and accounting for your VPN clients. Auditing makes sense. You want to make sure that you know what they're doing and create logs of that for security purposes. But accounting can be done for a couple of purposes. We do accounting, for example, at a corporate headquarters to find out when a user logs on to the connection and logs off of the connection and how long they use that connection and what they did while they were logged on. That can be done for optimization, for security auditing, for security policy. At a business or a retail organization, let's say like a coffee shop or a bookstore or something like that, we can use accounting actually for billing purposes. If we're billing clients who log on to the internet and use the wireless connection, for example. We can bill them for every 30 minutes or every hour that they're connected. You configure the network policy and access services role and the NPS role services to set up the server as an NPS server. Of course, there's the Active Directory server. VPN clients are provided with access credentials by the Active Directory server. You'll set this server up in Windows Server 2008 by configuring the Active Directory Domain Services role, ADDS. And then finally, VPN tunnels need to be authenticated and encrypted. One thing that we can use for this process in a large implementation over the internet where we've got lots of clients is to use a public key infrastructure. So we can control certification by using a certificate server. You do this by configuring the Active Directory Certificate Services role with the Certification Authority, CA, and the Certification Authority Web Enrollment Role Services. You also need to configure the web server, the IIS, Internet Information Services, and File Services role as supporting roles. However, you could use a third party certificate authority out here on the internet, let's say a CA like VeriSign or Thought or Intrust or GoDaddy, someone like that. That would be for a scalable public key infrastructure. In Windows 2008, NPS or Network Policy Server has replaced the IAS service. Maybe you're familiar with that, the Internet Authentication Service, IAS, which is still deployed and was widely used with Windows Server 2000 and 2003. The new NPS allows us to control network access policies for health of our client, client health, for authentication, and for authorization. NPS uses network access protection, which is a new technology that is kind of a competitor with Cisco's network admission control, NAC technology. We use NAP to manage, implement, and correct and quarantine clients for their health. Once you've configured the network access policy, NPS is going to use system health agents, SHAs, to check the health of clients that are trying to get access through a VPN connection. 
your network policy server then compares the health information with the specifications of the access policies to determine whether to allow access to the remote client. Now, depending upon how you configure your policies, clients can be given access while they're being monitored or they can be isolated or quarantined. Isolation means they're given access only to isolated parts of the network. Let's go take a look at configuring remote access on our Windows 2008 server. Okay, I'm up on my Windows 2008 server and we can see here that I actually already installed the network policy and access services. And remember how we did this, we went to the roles here, we right clicked and we chose to add the role. And we got the select server roles wizard. We went down here and we selected network policy and access services and we installed that. So we've kind of been there and done that. Now we've got, we'll cancel the wizard. Now we've got our routing and remote access and here's our NPS. Let's expand out routing and remote access. And we can see here, here's our uh, network interfaces, our IP version four and IP version 6. We've got our RIP routing, dynamic routing. This is from earlier on in this series. And if we actually right click on the network policy and access services and choose add role services, we can see that we also, during the wizard, have installed the network policy server, routing remote access. We've also added the service and routing. Two things we have not installed are the health registration authority and the host credential authorization protocol. Let's cancel out of there. Now once you enable RRADS, it's really important for the security of your network that only authorized remote access connections are allowed. So remote access policies are going to be the sets of rules that we use to either reject or authorize connections. Each of the designated rules has conditions for authorization, profile settings and permission settings for remote access. The remote access policies also specifies the restrictions that are placed on connections once they're authorized. Now one thing you don't want to do is just go into your remote access area and start configuring policies without really thinking it through. So I'm going to give you a couple of slides here that are going to show you some of the things to consider because a policy is always something that should be planned out and, can, and thought about and configured in advance. Now our remote access policies are the sets of rules that we use to either reject or authorize connections. Each of the rules designates conditions. So here's a list of the kinds of policies. So if you're going to authorize a remote connection, these are the remote access policies you want to confirm before you even go in and start configuring things. First of all, you want to know the permission for the remote access. You want to know group membership of the user who needs remote access, the connection type. Is it dial up or VPN? Authentication methods you're going to use. Are you going to configure and restrict the time of day that the user can get remote access to the network? The identity of the access server, the client phone number, or the physical MAC address of the client? Are you going to use the existing user account dial-in properties that are configured on the user's laptop, which may have been rolled out to all of the laptops in the organization? And are you even going to allow unauthenticated access? We need to answer these questions first. Then, we want to think about remote access policy restrictions. Once the connection has been authorized, what types of restrictions are we going to impose? Are we going to have any settings for idle timeouts? Are you going to configure a maximum session time for that user? What type of encryption strength are you going to use to encrypt those packets? Are you going to put in place IP packet filtering? Are you going to deploy static routes or are you going to use dynamic routing? And you may need to configure the IP address for point-to-point -point protocol connections. With that information under your belt and planned out, we can now go and configure our remote access policies back up on the Windows 2008 server. Okay, let's head down to the Start menu and we're going to go to Administrative Tools and we're looking for the MMC for the Network Policy Server. So let's go ahead and get that thing opened. First of all, what you're going to notice here, let's just get to the root of this, is you'll see the local network policy server 
And what you see is the opportunity to go and use this scenario wizard. And you can see here that when we click on the drop down here for this scenario wizard.